Bring the gurney up here. They have a man down. Does this look like narcotics? responded over to the housing unit, get a cuff on the hand, and we observed the inmate cellmate trying to wake him up. It appeared he may have had an overdose. The majority of the drugs that come into the prison are through our visiting. The visitors come in, they do remove their shoes, they do go through metal detectors, but they are not searched. Usually we would have the majority of the Hispanics with the black tar heroin. Marijuana is the majority of the blacks. And majority of whites have the methamphetamines. Nine times out of 10, that's how it works. They sell it amongst themselves. Drugs in prison is big business, lots of money. Who is this, do we know yet? Alpha 3 Control, Alpha 1. What's the name of that 1015 that was brought out of your housing unit? Hey, Long, we have an officer in around. Can you go ahead and hand down this uh, bed card to the officer? We're going to need his ID. Uh, Does this look like narcotics? Huh? Narcotics? <laughs> well, that's what, yeah, but you're going to want to check in between his toes and everything else. <clears throat> go ahead, pop that gate. They pull his cell out? Yeah, he's in the shower. They're searching the cell right now. Hey, Jackson, cuff him up, and we're going to bring him up front. How much is it? They did find the black sticky substance. We sent it out. It came back positive for black tar heroin, which is an opiate. And it's a very addicting narcotic. And it's very popular here in the prison. Hey, this is Lieutenant Billings from A facility. I still got his celly cuffed up. So do they want to come over and take a look at him, or what do they want us to do with him? And I had him stripped out, too. You don't mess around with dope? No. He's going to receive a write-up for possession of a controlled substance. That is also a DA referral, so the DA for Kern County can choose to pick that up, and he could get additional time for that. Come on in the cell. Let me show you how we're living up in here, man. You know. Basically, you got to keep flushing when you're using the bathroom. It's awful up in here. You know, the man defecating, you trying to eat or you trying to sleep in something, you got to smell it. It's bad. And the vents is not big enough. You know, and then you got cold air coming through the vent. We have to block it off just to keep that cold air from coming in. And the sinks is not even powerful enough to really do anything. You know, you get clogged up, small little holes. That's all you got for your bed right there. You got your little pillow, you got your little thin mattress. This right here, if you got back problems, you're in trouble. And when I got to come down, my feet is in his face. You see, I got to step on the table. I got to jump down most of the time. And if I'm not properly balanced, I can mess around, break my, break my arm and leg. You got metal around here. This is all metal. You spin around here, bust your head easily. Look at the edges. It should be rubber on the edges, but it's not. It's, it's, you can easily slip and slide and bust yourself, man, badly around here. We got to hang lines up. They get upset with us for hanging lines, but this is the only way we can dry our clothes when they wash it. You see what I'm saying? Unless you want to wait on the laundry, which comes once a week, but you wear your clothes most often every day. It's not a party. It's not fun. We're not having fun up in here. This is very rough, man. And then what it is, when that door, if you can see when that cell door closed in here, it's awful because you know you can't get out. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's very bad. It's a mental torture because now you're locked in a box. It's basically like a coffin. I was physically abused. I was beat. Before I was even like one years old, my mother would fly into fits of rage because she'd look at me, she would get upset, hit me because I reminded her of my father. So she said that she feared for my life because she was beating me so much and then put me up for adoption. And my father didn't want nothing to do with me. So I don't know my mother. I don't know my real father. Be sure, right? My sister was kidnapped and raped at the age of 10, and so I shot the dude that did it. I was 14 years old. It was the first time I'd ever been in trouble with anybody. And I ended up taking a deal to where I 
only had to serve till I was 18 in the Youth Authority in Phoenix, Arizona. I got beat up a lot. And I don't think like the first year I went without a black eye. So I started learning how to fight. And I started to fight really, really good. And one thing led to another and there's, you know, there's security in numbers, especially when you're young, you know? So I started running with these skinheads and soon I, I became one. I got out and I was 18 years old. I decided I'd take the easy road of making fast money, fast women, fast cars, you know? It just, it all comes in hand once you start taking advantage of, of all the illegal avenues that are out there. The next thing you know, I got the DEA knocking on my door and I went to prison. I got tipped up in the prison gang. My whole life revolved around that. I was extremely violent in the prison system, stabbing people, and everything was all about promoting myself for the prison gang, promoting the prison gang, becoming the baddest Nazi lowrider I could be. So do you think people in the world will look at me and they might like, still give me a chance eventually? Seriously? Yeah, it depends how you carry yourself. What if I just act like I'm talking to you right now? I'm fine. You're fine? Yeah. I'm what am I hiring fine. you to do, though? I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> uh, you're on. Mow your lawn? Sure. I mean, look, Withers is still relatively young, and he just doesn't have the kind of life experience to feel like he's good at maintaining a regular lifestyle. He's real good at doing the drug scene. He's real good at being a player. He's real good at all of that superficial, antisocial stuff. It's hard to sit there and just work 40 hours a week just for a sort of jump change, you know? So give me perspective about jump change versus lots of bucks illegally got. The jump change lasts a lot longer and you can't go to jail for it, right? That's right. The big bucks always gets me right back in here. And exactly. Where we're at okay, right now. So what did the big bucks cost you? I had to pay 10 years of my life. Okay. So now, what's the most important thing? Stay out. Exactly. To stay out and, and, and not come back. Freedom. Right? There's a high level of security here because they're higher risk inmates. So in order to get some degree of confidentiality and not shouting through the door, where other inmates can hear and where their cellmates can hear. I'll have them brought over to the cage and there's a fancier name for it other than cage, but it's a cage. I need to think about, instead of just wanting to get that quick money, just last it out and just work harder. Maybe work more overtime to get a little bit more money, see what I can do to make more money legally. Okay. And understand that, that this is how normal people live. <laughs> I guess. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense Lawful to me. Lawful abiding citizens. That's right. I think I, I think I got it in perspective this time. Inmates 